In today's video, we're going to look at installing the vCenter server appliance, or VCSA, version 7.0. Now there are a few things that we need to do before we proceed any further. The first is that we must make sure that we have good A and pointer records in our DNS server for the vCenter server which we are about to deploy. And uh, also make sure that the system that you are deploying the vCenter server from uh, has access to uh, that DNS server as well or is configured to use that DNS server. If it's not, then put uh, the um, the IP addresses and the appropriate host names in against your uh, local hosts file uh, and that will get you through the installation. The other thing to mention is uh, we really should have a good NTP server. NTP is critical for a lot of the VMware components, um, specifically for authentication and uh, we must have um, one that works correctly before we proceed any further. Now there are a few things you need to know before you upgrade to vSphere 7 and I've got a blog article about all of those things in the description below. And there are also some very interesting new features in vSphere 7 which I also have a link for in the description. So to get the VCSA installed, the first thing we have to do is download the uh, ISO from the my.vmware.com portal. And once you have that, simply mount the ISO to your local machine and navigate to the UI installer. If we scroll down here, we can see installer.exe. Once that's loaded up, we're just going to go through this wizard, which is fairly straightforward. We're going to go for an install. You note that the external platform service controller has been deprecated in this version. So as part of this um, installation, you won't be able to um, you will not so as part of this installation, you will not be able to deploy an external PSC, but that is fully supported. We're just going to accept the end user license agreement. And now we're going to specify either an ESXi host that already exists or a vCenter server that already exists, which we will use to deploy this vCenter server appliance to. So in my case, I'm just going to use one of the ESXi hosts that I have in my lab. Just accept the certificate warning once you're happy. This will then log into the the host, and um, we can now specify a a VM name for the vCenter server appliance that we're about to deploy. So this isn't the host name, but it's going to be what's displayed uh, within the uh, vCenter server or the ESXi host inventory. And then we just set the root password. And then we have to specify the size of the deployment. Um, in this uh, install here, we're just going to use the tiny deployment size because there's only going to be a couple of hosts and a few VMs in the lab. And as we mentioned earlier, the installer logs into the ESXi host, which you were targeting to deploy this, uh, this VM onto. And it will show us here all compatible data stores that we can deploy the VCSA to. Uh, so in my example, I've only got the one local data store. And I like to enable thin disk mode in the lab to save some space. And now we have to just quickly populate the network settings for the vCenter server appliance that we're going to be deploying. Okay, and that is everything that we need to do for stage one of the deployment, which simply deploys the appliance onto the host that we uh, specified earlier. Okay, so stage one has successfully completed and we need to move on to the final stage, which is stage two, and that deals with the actual setup of the vCenter server itself. So we're just gonna hit continue here. Then the wizard will move on to stage two for us automatically. Just hit next and they give it some very basic details such as where we're going to synchronize time from and whether SSH access will be enabled to the VCSA or not. So I'm just going to leave the defaults here. 
for the SSO domain, I'm just going to use the uh, standard vSphere.local domain and the SSO password. Now this is a this is of course if you're going to be creating a new SSO domain. If you're going to be joining an existing one, then you need to go for the join an existing SSO domain option below. And then it's just next. And then we need to join the CEIP if you desire. Uh, this does give us some additional benefit such as um, uh, health services, etc. for the VCSA, which is very useful and I'd advise that you uh, keep that enabled unless you have some corporate policy which uh, restricts you from doing so. And that's all the configuration that we need. We just need to review the uh, settings here. And then once we're done, we click finish and stage two will commence. Okay, so good news. Stage two of the VCSA installer has completed successfully. And all that's left to do is log in to the new vCenter server. I'm just going to check that it's healthy and that we can actually log in. Okay, so once we've logged into the new vCenter server, uh, in this instance here, there are no warnings, no alarms, or anything triggered, which is great news. Uh, two things that I would recommend you do straight away the first one is that you license the vCenter server. And the second is that you set up your file-based backups. And this is because in the vCenter server version 7, we're not able to use an image-based backup anymore. It's not supported by VMware. So we must schedule the file-based backups, um, which are uh, very easy to do and also very easy to restore from in case you have any problems. Okay, I hope that's been useful for everyone and I'll see you on the next one.